I invite you to please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied. For this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judea. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. And they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it, was, when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Well, there was a family that was driving into Fredericksburg, Virginia, and it was during the Christmas season. They had passed right by the front of the Lutheran church, and out in front of it was the manger scene. Well, this was a mom and a dad and a little boy in the car, and the little boy said, Mommy, what is that in front of the church? And she says, Well, that's Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus. They continued on a little bit farther, and a few blocks on down the road, they came to the Methodist church, and in front of it was the wise men. The little boy said, Mommy, who are they? And she told him that, that that's the wise men. They are looking for the baby Jesus. Well, the little boy says, they're not all that wise. They won't find him here. He's down in front of that other church. Yes. This is the season of Epiphany. We have just completed the 12 days of Christmas. And today is Epiphany, the day that Jesus was proclaimed through the wise men and that star to the rest of the world. Jesus is revealed to the Gentiles from this point forward and forevermore. There were no gifts of turtle doves, no French hens, no partridge in a pear tree. No, these gifts were more traditional. The gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Many legends have come across from these wise men. One of it, of course, is that there were three of them. Our gospel account does not tell us how many there were. The idea that there were three kings, of course, came to the fact that there were three gifts given, one king for each gift. The truth is, we don't really know who they are. Matthew calls them wise men from the east. They were probably astrologers, which explains why they would have noticed that star up in the sky and been so excited about that unusual finding. As they would say later to Herod, where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. 
The idea that heavenly signs mark the births and deaths of great leaders was widely accepted by the Eastern culture. What these men saw, it intrigued them. It excited them so much that they were willing to leave their homeland and leave their families behind and follow the star. They were probably from Babylon, and it was going to be a very long journey to the town of Bethlehem. One scholar estimates that the journey would have been four months, not including the time it would have taken them to get ready. For the wise men, this was the single most important journey that they would ever take. Nothing, no one was going to stand between them and following that star. You see, these magi made an incredible and dramatic commitment of time to search for this new king. This gift of time that we've all been given is a very, very precious thing. And we can, each of us, give it back to Jesus. There is a wonderful message from the wise men for us. These wise men, they lived right in the midst of their normal lives and that's where God found them. They were at work when God gave them a sign. You see, God isn't limited to this space, this one hour in the week. God can and does come to us anytime, anywhere. The message is that we are to be constantly alert for what God has prepared for us in this life. So I want you, first of all, to remember to be alert. Think about this day and be alert. The second is a willingness, a willingness to take action. You know, the wise men could have seen that star up in the sky and said, oh well. Or they could have seen that star up in the sky and thought, wow, that is really something, but I'm not going to leave my family and home. No. They put a commitment to their conviction. They put feet to their faith and they began that journey. When God presents each of us with a new opportunity, are we willing to get up and start a new journey? The story of the wise men helps us see that there is something really special, something remarkable that awaits us at the end of our journey. I think one of the things that has interested, interested me most about this story is the incredible wrong turn that these men took as they neared the end of their journey. Instead of following the star to Bethlehem, they stopped in Jerusalem to ask directions of Herod which has really caused some people to suggest that this perhaps might be why the Magi are so famous. They perhaps are the only men in history known to stop to ask for directions. I'm checking to see if you're listening. But really, in a way, this visit, it might have been expected. After all, they were on a journey to welcome the king of the Jews. Did they think perhaps that it was Herod's newborn son? But the wise men, they had an interview with Herod's court. Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? And their response, in Bethlehem, in Judea, for that is what the prophet has written. For it was written. These wise men found their way when they went to the scriptures. So what is God calling us to do, his people? We don't need to guess. We have the answers right here in this book. The answers are for us. And if you want to help and be with us and study 
We're going to walk through this book from cover to cover over the next year. Start with us. Read with us. Come and join a study group if you want. Come and see what God has planned for your life as it is written in this holy book. The scriptures are clear. And the Magi are back on course. They found Jesus in Bethlehem and they laid before him their gifts. And they worshipped him. There's quite a lesson for us in the gifts that were given. In fact, you could almost say that God himself had inspired these offerings. The first gift was gold, presented to an infant king, a symbol of royalty. Frankincense, a very expensive resin that was used and burned in the temple as a symbol of prayer. It spoke of Jesus' divinity. And myrrh, another expensive resin that was used in embalming, representing his death for us. These were the gifts that were given with care and adoration to this newborn king. But as religious as these gifts are, they certainly had a practical value that maybe the Magi didn't even realize. Hear God's words. When the wise men had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there till I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. How in the world were Mary and Joseph and a baby going to survive in a foreign country with no family and no immediate source of income? How? Well, they had gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Gifts of great value, a currency that was accepted throughout the whole known world. So the good news for us from this reading on this day, be ready. Be ready to meet God in your everyday life, just as the Magi. And then rise up, follow the star. Secondly, what you believe, it should determine how you behave. Be willing to put your commitment into action. Be willing to put your feet on your faith and then rise up and follow the star. And finally, number three, scripture is God's word. Your resource to know God's direction for your life. Let God's word just fill you and then rise up and follow the star. Where is that light leading you? Be open to the transforming power of God's Holy Spirit. Be open. Prepare your heart for action. Rise up, my friends. Rise up and follow the star. Amen.